If I had had them. Now, I was kind of looking back through my reviews to see if I'd actually reviewed the predecessor to this one, and it don't look like I had. Which I thought I might have, since when I was doing a one of my January marathons of some of my favorite films, Strangers would have been on my short list, because... I really enjoy The Strangers. I think it's one of the better home invasion films out there. And one of the better slasher movies in recent memory. So, when the sequel came out way too many years later, uh, 2018, uh, well, The Strangers originally came out 2008, so a good 10 years later, I was interested and cautiously optimistic, but the time frame... Usually when there's a sequel made that much later, it's not a good sign. Especially since the sequel is greenlit in 2009. Now, I don't know exactly what de developmental problems it had, but you can feel them. So, The Strangers Pray at Night. Okay, I also have that title. I'm just trying to figure out um, what the title's supposed to be here. Is, is there supposed to be a colon? Is it the strangers pray at night? It looks like a sentence. Is that what the strangers are doing? Or is it the strangers colon pray at night? So why is pray at night the the signal? Is it talking about their pray at night? or is it, I don't know. It just sounds weird. So. This one, it's just a really a rehash of the strangers. And not in an interesting way. I mean, I guess they up it a little here and there, but... So, this one takes place at kind of a resort, like a trailer resort, or uh, like up in the woods far away. It's They seem to indicate that some people would rent out these trailers for vacation things. And that's the area that the, the strangers are now running around. The opening scene actually had me interested where the, the owners for it are, there's a knock at their door late at night, and uh, after the lady goes to check on it, uh, there's a figure standing behind her, another one's crawling into bed with her husband. It's only creepy. That's about where it, it loses its steam, though, after that scene. Okay, so this one picks up with a family that's having some problems. Hey, just like the strangers. But this one, it's a family of four rather than a couple that uh, was having some marital problems. Or, not quite marital, uh, she re rejected his proposal. Now, it's trying to do sort of the same thing. In the strangers, you didn't know exactly what was why this couple was tense at first. It slowly revealed it to you. Like, they were well-dressed, but uh, they definitely were soon to be coming back unhappy from a party. They weren't speaking. And it kind of sometimes is it. Finally, it shows, like, him open a ring box, look at it, and look disappointed. Okay, it doesn't come right out and say it, but it slowly and organically reveals it to you. Now, this time, uh, the daughter is going to boarding school. Why is she going to boarding school? Okay, they slowly they try to do it again, but slowly revealing that uh, she has some problems and needs to go there for some sort of, uh, some problems she's done. But they never say quite what she did. And they don't really go into it too much, other than, okay, she's staying out late with her friends, I, I guess. Her mother seems to indicate that she, what she did was really stupid, but they never really tell you what it is. So you don't know exactly why the family is so tense. And she's, the daughter, is acting like everyone else is overreacting and uh, is very hostile. But you never can tell if it's justified or not. So they try to do the same thing about having the characters on the rocks and having to come together to survive the night. But this one, it pretty much, uh, one person gets, then one of the family is killed, and then the daughter is suddenly going home quickly clinging to everyone else. And it's like, all that tension is just forgotten. Okay. So, then they proceed to essentially remake the movie in this trailer park area, because once the family gets up there, they get they get checked in. Yeah, the their aunt, their the uncles who uh, and aunt who own the place aren't showing up, but the the strangers are nice enough to leave a note for them, telling them where to go. And then we do the same thing of a knock at the door. Is camera home? 
which in the first one it was just kind of creepy and unsettling. Here it's like, is this just how they start? Why is that their call sign? The fact that using the exact same thing is, I guess, consistent, but a little weird. Then they even repeat it, like they did in the first one, with the, them discovering that the light bulb, for some reason, was just unscrewed, which is why the girl was in shadow. It's wholesale the exact same scene. They even do the whole, repeated the whole, why are you doing this to us, scene later on, is, well, the dynamic's a little reversed, because now the stranger has a gun pointed at them. But it's the same feel. And it comes at about the same point in the climax. So it's... It just feels like a rehash. Gore effects are fine. Also, the, the strangers themselves. I mean, I know they never really have names that are said, but there was Man in, Man in the Mask, Dollface, and Pinup. Pinup's barely in it. I, apparently her actress had some problems, or was just having some claustrophobia issues, I guess, with the mask. I don't think it was uh, the same actress from the first one. Let's double check on that now. It feels so long ago. I'll scroll way back. No, no. It was a different actress for her, so they got someone who couldn't operate in the mask. So... Pinup has like two scenes, maybe then before being off essentially as the first one to go. So she doesn't actually kill anyone that's on screen. Man in the Mask is fine, and uh, Dollface seems to be the standout that they're trying to play up. If she'd be the poster child here, unlike uh, Man in the Mask, who was the first in the first one, but. Some of the interesting bits at the end were end of the first Strangers, spoilers for that one, I guess, was Dollface uh, seeming to almost be slightly hesitant or concerned about what they were doing, and they get, uh, then Pinup gives her a don't worry, it gets easier kind of line. Well, I mean, that development is just not here. They never reference it, and Dollface seems completely fine going through all the motions, so that build-up's lost. Now, there's kind of a fan theory that the strangers are actually supernatural entities, which that little bit at the end of the first one seems to contradict that a bit. But in this, then kind of citing that their ability to seem to be multiple places at once and uh, take an unusual amount of punishment. So in this one, with the exception of Man in the Mask, they don't really take an unusual amount of punishment. And, uh, for seeming to be in multiple places, well, I didn't really notice that in the original Strangers. In this one, it's because you can't tell where anything is. You can't tell how far apart the characters are from each other. You have no idea on the layout of this place. The characters themselves are getting lost, so how are you expected to figure out where anything is? Where's the road in relation to where the cabins are? Where's their cabin versus the cabin where they find the bodies? You can't tell. Uh, an example for that in particular is... Uh, the daughters run off, pouting into the night, and the brother's gone after her. So, they wander for a while, it's... They hang out at a couple locations and finally find an open cabin, go in and find the bodies. So, then they run back to try to find and their family. So, they seem to run, go, like, behind a building and bump right into their family. Okay. So then he's like, okay, uh, can you show me where it is? Okay. And it goes back. And then it shows him going through a few areas first. It's like, Okay, that's all. It look, may look like they're right there, but now it's all of a sudden it's like a much longer walk. So personally, I think it would take something away if these if the strangers were supernatural. This is better done as a realistic property, really. So I'm hoping they kind of close the door on the sequel, given what happens to them. And it's, they just went up through the same notes again, but this time they're just better, at, the, he, the kids are better at defending themselves. Core effects are fine. Yeah, some scenes do have some tension, and some scenes are still stylist when they shot. Like, The Strangers had style. This one, it, 
there are echoes of that style. There's some great framing. You know, some things are framed beautifully. But the storyline is where it really falls apart. It's just the same thing. Which, yeah, sometimes that's what you go for in a slasher film. I mean, I can't pretend the Friday the 13th films are different. But I thought we've gotten past that at this point. They had ten years to come up with something. They gave us the same thing. So, it's fine. I'm not going to say it's terrible, because what works does work, and The Strangers originally worked. This one just for some reason seems to just... is diminishing returns. I'll give it five MacGuffins. That's pretty much the best I can do on this one. Five MacGuffins, and that's, if anything, being a little generous, just because of the cinematography is what gets it there. And the soundtrack. It's a good soundtrack. Alright. Strangers, pray at night. Dive my